First one to comment with the correct amount of owls in this video wins a prize. It is March 15th. It is snowing and it is very cold. Um, so I'm creating another honest reality video, what it's like to make 100K a month. As a YouTuber and blogger, I'm gonna show you around the house a little bit more. We're gonna talk about some deeper stuff because we know a lot of times we tend to compare ourselves to other people who say they make more money than us and it really robs us of living in the present moment. So I'm gonna show you around. I'm gonna get inside in a second here because it's freezing, but let's get into it. And then of course I'll take you to my favorite place in the house, what we call Box Mountain. One thing I've pretty much moved like three times and taken with me each time, this beautiful Breaking Bad signed memorabilia, Aaron Paul, Brian Cranston, signed masks, and it's in the theater along with you know, a couple of other items, Mandalorian things. Uh-oh. And this is the college it took me about six years to graduate from with a bachelor's in media arts and technology, whatever that means. The popcorn is still here two weeks later. So it actually almost looks the same, but when I do it this way, it's like Inception. All right, so here's the studio. There's a Shure microphone. I have here is the Sony remote app, which actually allows me to turn the camera on and off. Sitting here, so I don't have to get up and turn it on. But we can see, this is kind of the setup here. So I got my computer, random stuff that you can't really see in the video. Uh, the background, as we know. And then we look out here, I got the lamp, and a dying plant, which I need to water. This is some of the backyard area. I gotta put the chairs out there. But again, this is a nice, View. There's a bunch of hills up here, but it's freaking cold. And it says April 15 in the video, but it's actually March 20th. So it's still snowed yesterday and it's like 25 degrees probably. Look at my wardrobe. You know, I was gonna clean up for everybody, but this is actually what it looks like right now. Grab a t-shirt, throw it on, flop it in the corner like a slob. So that's pretty cool. Another camera, this is actually a Aperture uh, 120D in a light dome. That's a horrible angle. <laughs> This one is the most expensive part, like it's like $1,100 light. It's just really good, big light. Um, I have a teleprompter here for whenever we do like recorded ads or things like that, sponsored stuff. You set the phone right here and then it hits this mirror, shoots off, and it actually lets you just read it. So it's simple. Secondary camera, I don't really use that that much. I was gonna use it for shorts, but it's just actually easier if I use this. And then it's a Sony A7C. Pretty easy to use. We have a cord hanging from this, goes into the computer here. We have a uh, focus right, little audio thing, workstation, whatever you call it, boom arm. So it's a pretty simple setup. Um, you know, it's a decent amount of space. I have three chairs here that I never use. I have some pretty cool stuff here, like, uh, oh, you know, an ancient scroll. Uh, some hair, my wigs, some links, some some blueprints, all that kind of stuff. A secret compartment, uh, a fridge, and you know, no old home would be complete without a bunch of things coming out of the wall and then bird wallpaper, owls, the mighty great horned owl, and of course, what my wife got me, something I would never get myself, but it's a nice king's thing and i only put it in the room where i'm here because i don't want anyone to think i think that way so it's an interesting area of the studio if you're interested in seeing more let me know but we have the green screen here as well so this thing just pulls up you put this thing up and then you pull it all the way up and it can make any background you want puzzle of jen and i some very old baseball cards from the 1970s. The YouTube thing. And that is it. So that is the view when I'm sitting down. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in another studio in another state in the future. All right. We are back in the studio to a familiar location. So this one again is gonna be a raw reality video. Not much editing, just me talking about life, business, maybe some tips in there for you. Uh, so it's just, you know, kind of like a podcast. So just relax and listen and we'll get into it. I just wanna say thank you for everybody who watched the last Honest Reality video. I was actually kind of amazed by all of the positive comments that we had. Like, I know it's kind of hard sometimes when we're running these types of 
businesses and YouTube channels and it can get impersonal sometimes, so I'm glad you like this style of video. I like it too because I can just talk for an hour and not have to say specific things. So again, I have some notes on my computer here and I'm just gonna kind of be looking at them. I'm not gonna really edit anything. We're just gonna, I'll show a few examples of stuff, but other than that, we're just gonna chat. So what I really liked about the last video is, you know, when you realize and we're talking about like personal stuff, a lot of the problem that I see is that this guru influencer culture, they'll tell you, you know, you're not good enough if you're not making a million dollars or five million dollars or, you know, I made this or talking to rich billionaires. And it's like the more that you consume that content, the more you watch it, the more that you try to make this passive income, the more that you believe that your life is going to be better one day. Right. If only I make that money, then my life will really start everything will be figured out. I'll be living in the right place. I'll have the right amount of money. I won't have to stress about this or that thing or the other thing. And I'll finally make it and then my life will begin. So you're always kind of future tripping, living in the future, right? When you're not really present in the current moment. And that's a problem I've always faced is like trying to grow, trying to, you know, succeed in online business and succeed in life. And just kind of like living in the future, pushing, pushing, going uphill when it's really like, gratitude and being grateful for what you have now is important because as I've said in the last video one thing I've learned is that more money doesn't necessarily make you happier it's really just it does a few things for you it gets you out of a job that you hate if you hate it right if you like it then maybe it's nice to get out of the house and go do it right sometimes it can be a little bit lonelier working from home doing you know a YouTube channel or a blog or something like that uh, and then it just gives you time back so that's the main thing I wanted was just time time freedom. So money provides time freedom in a way because you can get financial independence through that. But don't think that your life's not good now because you haven't made it to that point yet. Because I can tell you that I've made it to that point at different phases. Now there's people way higher than me, right? So you're always, there's always that comparing culture going on. But uh, just know that like, you know, when I think about it, there was moments in time where I was happy, just as happy making $40,000 a year. Right, because it's more about the present moment, mental health. Are you working out? Are you happy? All of those things. Like you can make, you let your reaction to life is what's important. Something bad happens or something good happens. How are you reacting to it in that moment? Are you looking at forty thousand a year and being like, oh, my life sucks because I'm not making what that millionaire guy on Instagram is making, or it's like actually I have everything I need to be happy right now. I'm sitting in a room. I'm with people around me. Right. So. That's that it's just the main thing I see is like this aspirational make money so your life will be better in transformation. Now, that works in marketing materials. Don't get me wrong, but at the same time, I just want you to know like your life is no worse now than any of those people worse or better now than any of those people. That stuff doesn't really matter. So that's a big problem. It's living for one day versus, you know, realizing now is all that you have. And really the ego has to learn the hard way for me. So sometimes it's never enough, you know, thinking you want something and realizing once you have it, it's actually not what you want. So what's interesting is there's been a lot of life changes for me. We'll talk about this and we'll get into some of the business stuff. But I realized that even though I just started showing you this house and stuff outside and how big it is and all that, I don't actually want it, right? So I'm actually, <laughs> there's a bunch of different things happening and I don't think I'm gonna stay here for much longer. One, it's a, I have a mortgage on it <clears throat> and it's a lot of money every month. And just that, like I just would rather not pay that. Plus there's a lot of rooms and you have to clean them, right? Clean them, take care of it. It's a distraction. I realized that like, yeah, it's a big house. There's <clears throat> three furnaces and freaking water softener and things to fix in a yard and all of that stuff. And it's like, I realized that uh, I like simplicity. So not complicated stuff, not figuring everything out, but like, it's just a little bit too complicated for me. I think it's, it's too much. It's too much money. It's too big. I like simple. All I need is like a living room with a big TV, a kitchen, and maybe two sinks in the bathroom. That's what I asked for, for my wife and I, you know? <laughs> so we have our own bathrooms now separately, which has been quite nice, but you know, it's, it's something I realized. And then other life things are happening. So, um, a lot of these things, you know, are based on what's happening in life. So like all that stuff to deal with, um, Jen's pregnant right now. So my wife's pregnant and she, we had a little bit of a scare two weeks ago. So she was 24 weeks pregnant and she started like bleeding and having some regular kind of contractions. So we're like, oh shit, we went to the hospital. We were there all day and 
we were talking to the doctors and it's like, you know, if she gives birth right now, the chances are like, basically at 24 weeks, it's like super premature. So the chances are like 50, 50 that the baby makes it. And then it's like 80% or more that they have problems. Um, so that was going through our head. We're in Northern Michigan right now. The hospitals are okay. They're not that good. But we realized we're like, oh shit, we'd have to go down to Ann Arbor or Grand Rapids to be in a NICU and the baby would have to be there for three months if that happened, right? So all of these things started flowing through our head and it was kind of stressful. So with all that said, with the house is too big, it's a little bit too remote, it's like 40 minute drive to get to the hospital. I'm actually gonna be moving with Jen pretty soon again back to Texas. So her mom lives in Texas, um, she's a good support system. And then the hospitals, believe it or not, are actually a lot better. The ones that we're gonna be near are some like, some of them are like the top 10 in the country. So um, we can go and drive, you know, five to seven minutes to that doctor's appointment versus, uh, you know, 45 minutes in traffic. So. With that said, all that new house stuff you just saw, it's gonna be gone pretty soon. So I've been here now at the time of this recording for like a little over six months. My moving history is a little bit absurd. Um, <laughs> so what I realized is like, I was trying to figure out like where the perfect house would be and all of these things. Cause you make money, then it's like, what do I do with it, right? Well, you invest some of it, you save some of it, you spend some of it and you put some into a house. So I was like, the last, since 2019, like I started this business in Austin, Texas, right? I was in a one bedroom apartment downtown. I started the business after seven months of it working in July of 2019. It was making like 10 to $20,000 a month at a certain point. I actually left when I realized it was making more like five to 10. I left in July of 2019 and I packed my stuff. I put it all at my brother's house in Michigan. And then that's when I traveled. So I went to Barcelona, Paris, Italy, Ireland, Japan, and Australia for like six months. It was great. I was just had a blog and I was making around $30,000 a month, 30 to 40. And I was kind of just spending it all. I had no money at the time. I had no net worth at the time, <laughs> but uh, it's kind of interesting. Like I've moved there. Then I'm like, this is too much. I moved back to Michigan. COVID hit. I said, it's too cold. We're locked down. I moved to Florida. I moved to the Orlando area. That's where I met my wife. Right, so that was probably the most important decision I made. I moved down to Florida for income, no income taxes. And I'm like, I just wanna be somewhere warm. And then um, we liked it in Orlando, but then it got a little bit busy. There was an HOA that was annoying. And like one day, like uh, our water, they like the HOA controlled our sprinkler system. It was the peak of the summer. It broke at a neighbor's place for seven days. They didn't come to replace it. And like all the plants and bushes died which was, it was a new house build. So it was like $10,000 worth of bushes, right? So I'm like, oh, this is kind of annoying. So we moved to Vero Beach and that was near the ocean. And I really liked that. But then again, it was like, geez, it was like a hurricane insurance and another HOA and it was like, it was nice. So I thought, well, it's still kind of a smaller condo. Um, maybe we'll move back to Michigan to be closer to my family again. <laughs> so we moved here, bigger house, amazing. I thought that's what we wanted. Uh, but it's really not, it's too big. So I think going full circle on all of this back to Texas is actually a really good thing because I realized I don't give a shit about a house now. I don't care about fixing the cabinets or the countertops or having the perfect looking, I just don't, I just don't want the stress of it. I want simplicity because again, everything is a distraction. Everything that takes up your time and deals with material possessions and things occupies your mind and it just takes you away from the present moment. At least that's my experience going through this. So the ego had to have the big house and see to the highest extent possible what that would be like to realize that's actually not what I want. So for you, it's actually a kind of an interesting thing wherever you're at in life. It's like, you might think you want something and it's like the ultimate goal. It's amazing, you hit it. And then you're like, actually, no, I don't want that. I want something simpler. I want something smaller. So it's really interesting. So, you know, we're making good money with this business, but I'm going down to Texas and I'm actually gonna stay and live at my mother-in-law's house for uh, while we're selling this house and selling the house in Turkey. So wait till those sell, it could take a while, but her mother-in-law is retired. She's a saint. She's so helpful and does everything for us. And so I'll be shooting videos like from the attic or in my mother-in-law's basement. It's gonna be great. The video headline is gonna be like, how to make 100K from your mother-in-law's basement, right? Half the people won't even believe that 
<laughs> what I'm talking about. So, um, but it's good. I'm excited about it to get out of the damn cold again. I spent five years out of the cold and I'm like, okay, I actually want to um, get back to warm weather. So let's get into the business stuff. What's interesting and good about it is with the move to Texas, I'll be closer to Colin, my business partner, and there's a lot of good things there. So I have no income taxes in Texas. Um, we can build a different studio so we can shoot different types of content together. Um, there's a lot more opportunities to collaborate. It's a lot easier with you know, business in one state rather than having different states. Because if you're in different states and you have presence there, that can mean different things. So if I'm in Michigan right now, I pay like personal um, state income tax when I'm living here. It's like 4.25%. I'll get rid of that when I move to Texas. Um, so it's really good. I'm excited to do it. I'll be a couple hours away from Colin, I think in Austin. So it should be good. So what's interesting on the blog is like the last uh, reality video I did, um, we were showing traffic and it's about two weeks later in actual real time. So it's not always the same schedule as like when I'm talking right now, it's actually March 20th. I'll get into my YouTube calendar, but this video is probably going on in April. So it's probably a month after I actually shot this. <laughs> but um, last video we had like 40K in analytics. Now we're at like 50. So we're seeing a good 27% traffic increase recently with a, brand, with a new strategy that's actually a lot easier. So what we did was, and this is 30 day sessions. So what we did that was pretty simple. It's like my blog specifically was ranking for a lot of really difficult, impossible software stuff. And then when it got pushed to page two for that, it kind of stopped in some of those categories where some of the more high DR um, media sites kind of took over. But what we found is, and I was saying this in another video, that things that weren't really competitive didn't get more competitive. Things that were already competitive got more competitive, but things that weren't competitive didn't really get more competitive. So those long, for, like longer informational posts around ideas, trends, examples, things that like, it's an ideas or simple post, it's not risky, it's not like uh, your money, your life keyword around credit cards or health or something that's, you know, you need a lot of expertise in. It's just we were going after for a while like super really difficult stuff in software and business. And now it's like we, you know, I'm kind of transitioning my blog more into, um, content. So YouTube, Instagram, blogging, all the stuff that we actually do, which makes sense. TikTok, like we have TikTok account, Instagram over 100K, my Instagram account, YouTube, um, blog, all of the content, right? So what we're really good at is building these highly profitable content businesses from a small following. So I found that was interesting. Ahrefs still doesn't believe me and thinks the traffic's at 13K, but they're completely inaccurate most of the time. Um, we also have blog growth engine. So that one's getting, let's see, another 14,000 sessions a month. So 60 something between the two. Uh, and then on YouTube, this is the last 30 days on YouTube. So we're seeing some good growth there. 526,000 views in the last 30 days, 5.5K new subscribers. And 4,300 in ad revenue, which as we've showed in other videos, is like between one and 2% of our actual total. So it's kind of interesting. Um, but I want to kind of talk about how the YouTube process works. So like I said, it's actually March 20th right now, but YouTube is great because I can batch my time a little bit so I can get ahead of it. So I still prep and plan and shoot every video myself. I don't have a person or producer doing that. I don't edit every video. Um, we have Luca, our amazing editor who does that. But, uh, as you can see here, we use notion for my videos. So like we had, um, the reality video that just came out, actually, I'm shooting this literally two days after the publishing of that. Cause I saw people were like, oh, you should do another one. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it now before I move because we're moving sooner rather than later down there because we can't wait until closer to the pregnancy. Um, so I give the people what they ask for, but you can see, uh, honest reality video. This is this one. And it's a notion card for April 15th. So I might move this up a little bit. But I have like a legal video coming out about like in like privacy policy, FTC, compliance, affiliate, all that stuff that people ask about a lot. Um, copyright, all that kind of stuff. How to start different things. Pinterest video that's really interesting and a different traffic source. Um, so what I'm doing that I like is like, so you can see it's a month in advance. Now, the good thing about YouTube, what I like to do is like you can batch your time out. So yeah, I could shoot a video, like two videos a week and try to get, you know, stay kind of not too far ahead. 
but because I'm going to be moving again, at least packing up my clothes and my studio stuff and going down there with Jen and the dogs, um, I wanted to get ahead. So I'll at least have like a week or two to decompress when I'm down there. So that's kind of what it typically looks like though. I like working in sprints on stuff on YouTube. So I can prep a couple videos a day. I can shoot a couple videos in a day. Two is probably my max. One day I did four YouTube videos and it was like, probably three hours of talking and I lost my voice and I got laryngitis. So uh, I learned to stop at a certain point because it's not worth it. So two videos I can do in a day and I want to make them really good, right? So I spend like 90% of the time prepping the videos, creating notes, um, things I'm going to cover, examples, thought process, laying it out in the right way, and then 10% on shooting it. So really what this says though is like have a content plan and stick to it. So if you have a publishing date, and it's in Google Sheets or Notion or anything, just make sure you stick with it, you know? Then you know ahead of time, like this has to get done, these are gonna get done. So blogging and YouTube are a little bit different. Blogging is like kind of an ongoing process. Right now I do keyword research to find opportunities for things to write, and I send them to our writer, and he does everything that way. So um, I'll do a little bit of light editing on certain important posts, but other than that, I'm pretty hands off with the blog, which is pretty cool because it made over a million dollars in 2023. Makes about 50K a month, just generally in recurring affiliate commissions every single month. And I don't do anything other than keyword research now. So I send like, here's 30 articles for the month or here's 40 articles for the month that we have a couple writers do. Here's the title and keyword, create these. That's really all the work I do now on the blog. Now it does require some, you know, it's gonna need a revamp, redesign, a bunch of stuff in the future. There's lots of opportunities for it, even, you know, uh, getting the traffic up, even things like PPC and different opportunities there for affiliate marketing. So there's a lot of stuff there. Um, and we have a little, you know, a lot of plans for the business in the future too. Uh, moving to Texas will open up new content opportunities with Colin and I. We also want to like expand my YouTube channel a little bit. So like a video like this, now I'm not talking about how to start a blog, affiliate marketing 101, the core stuff. Like that is what teaches people and helps them and it also makes money for the business, right? Because it builds leads and sales and things like that. That's just how business works. If this YouTube channel wasn't making me a dollar, I wouldn't do it. I'm an introverted person. I wouldn't be talking to a little camera lens just uh, for fun, <laughs> right? But if I'm gonna do it, I like that creating more videos like this where it's like I actually get to talk to you as a normal person and it's not like in this video we're going to teach all these highly polished to make money online videos that people do you know i made a million dollars a day with this clickbank hack pointing smiling it's like in this video, like every second counts in this video we're going to do this 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 and this and if you stick till the end you have to stick till the end because it's retention and you have to like and subscribe it's just you know it's hard to showcase who you really are in those types of videos but anyways we'll have more videos like this and then other topics so Yes, I have a blog, but also the YouTube channel, social media, all the things we're doing with video content. So we upped production to two YouTube videos a week, long form, and then shorts every day. So we have short videos and I can batch those or I can do like 15 of those in a day. I just changed my shirt uh, every third video or so. And those go, what's great about those is they can go to YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram Reels. So. It's good to just be a little bit of everywhere, right? And increase the um, publishing velocity. And then also just talking about other stuff. So it affords me to be able to like, I can do a, a blogging related video on Monday, like new stuff with Google and what to do and you know, blog specific stuff. And then on Thursday I can do videos like this or I can do YouTube or courses or other things that are related to uh, making money with content driven businesses, but just not you know, necessarily the same stuff because for two years, it's like we're writing all the same stuff a lot and it's kind of, it gets a little bit difficult. So there's a really good opportunity here for expanding the channel outside of that. So a lot of different things, different communities we're creating, different things that we're gonna be teaching. But I, I want you to know, like I will always be the same person. I'll always teach blogging. Nothing is really changing. We're, I'm always gonna have the blog, all of that stuff. So what you see though is that I've kind of made myself on a little bit of a content hamster wheel, right? So videos always have to be done. If I have to move or go on a trip, I have to get ahead of it. So um, I'm not complaining by any means. I'm definitely in a fortunate position. So don't take that the wrong way, but it's kind of what I'm getting at is like the attachment to technology. So I hate being attached to technology. That's the one thing. 
if I could start over and do a completely different business, I'd probably be doing something outside because I just see how with the rise of TikTok and people's attention spans and being online, it's like most of us work on computers, right? If you have an office job. So you're constantly checking emails, checking stuff, looking at your phone, doing all of that. And it kind of just destroys attention spans and it's like an addicting technology. So for me, I also have been kind of in, what I realized too in Michigan here, it's been just cold winter, all winter. So I'm kind of stuck inside. Like, yeah, I like to ski. Yeah, I walk outside and hike in the, in the snow when it's like 20 degrees, 30 degrees, but it's cloudy every day for the most part. And it's like, I'm not getting outside as much. So I'm kind of looking forward in the move to like, you know, having hobbies. I love running and I haven't done it as much cause it's been freaking cold. Um, I hate treadmills. I just like being outside and doing it. It's probably one of my favorite things. Um, so doing that, so having hobbies that are just different from your business completely, right? Which is kind of tough because if you're working full time and you're starting an online business like a blog or YouTube channel, you have to sacrifice in the short term, right? To get success in the long term. So that's where most people don't fully succeed in that transition. It's like, for me, I had to work seven months pretty much all the time to build one of the fastest growing blogs while I was working full time. So the sacrifice has paid off, obviously. I got all my time back later in different ways. Um, and then I wanted to grow the business because you get bored. So everyone's kind of aiming for, I want to retire. I want a bigger house. I want to move here. I want to do this. When really it's like, you're going to retire and then you might get bored. You're going to get the bigger house. You might want the smaller one again. <laughs> so uh, the grass is not always greener on the other side as someone who's done a lot of these different things. Um, so, you know, a lot of the things that I, I think about nowadays, like, are when I talk about and think about like the struggles or um, what life is like, I think that as people, like human beings, we're very, um, we still have those ancient like caveman or woman survival mechanisms, right? And we think in different ways. So we're always looking for problems to solve. We're always looking things for things to fix. Um, and we always, always have like one big problem at the moment. So you have all these little problems and things you got to deal with, but like, what's the big one that's annoying you? There's usually one. And then once that one's solved, then another one will come to the forefront, push that out. Then another one will come. And it's like, when you are like laying in bed at night or you're meditating, what comes to mind? Like what thing comes to mind for you that is a negative thought, right? That's the thing that you need to to figure out and solve. Some of it's easy to figure out and solve. Like at one point when I was living in Florida, I was running on the beach and my head kept going back to like, I hadn't talked to my, my dad and I had a little tiff and like I hadn't talked to him in a month and I kept coming back. I was like, I gotta call him. And I'm like, once I did, that completely went away. I wasn't worried about it. But we all have, no matter what, no matter where we are, no matter how much money we make or where we live or, we all have problems, right? We all have struggles. Um, so mine right now is like worrying about my wife and baby and the pregnancy, moving and running this business all at once. So it's, you know, that takes up a majority of my headspace. Um, and again, if when you sign up to be a parent, you're going to have some worry for the rest of your life. So I'm fine with that. But I've struggled kind of with balance my whole life. So balancing things. Um, I have very much a one track mind. A lot of the times I obsess over things. Like if I want to figure out this move, I'm going to figure it out until it's done. Um, if we're going to do it, I'm going to do this thing the very best I can until it's done. So it, it works in business sometimes, but it's also annoying in on the spiritual side of life because I'm so, I get hyper focused on things. So it's kind of tough, but I realize like life is not a problem to solve, right? It's an experience to be had. So, I struggle with that. I struggle sometimes from switching tasks, kind of almost like ADD. Like if I'm focusing on work, I, I the transition to like shooting a video like this for an hour and then like walking through the door and just being, forgetting it, <laughs> it's kind of tough, which is the tough part about working from home that a lot of us do, right? It's like I have this separate space in my house to do work and then when I'm in the living room, I try not to look at stuff, but of course I do check Slack. Sometimes I do look at my emails, like it's an addicting phone thing, but I do my best not to, especially if we're going out and doing something like going out to dinner, I will never even look at my phone. Right. So it just depends. Um, so 
again, if life is not a problem to solve for me, I realize then, and if life is not a problem to solve for you, then how can you just simplify things and realize that the things that you're thinking about that are stressing you out could be solved by simplicity. So for me, it's like downsizing the house, not worrying about it, right? That removes that stress, you know? Um, that's why I realized like someone asked me about, do you do short-term rentals or real estate? It's like for me personally, would it make sense to have like a short-term rental house that's rented out on Airbnb? Potentially, but, and then like, you know, the higher earning business people are like, you need this LLC to run this and then every house is under an LLC and then you need to put a trust and then you need to do that. And then, you know, every dollar that you spend needs to move from here to here. So when you buy a six, you know, an Apple, it's actually your father's grandfather's trust that's buying the Apple. So don't buy it with this card, but buy it with that card but actually just take cash out and then put it on your mat. It's like, I don't want any of that. That's just so complicated, right? So I think for me, it's simplifying. It's um, having a simpler life. Distraction-free, I think, is actually one of the most important things I'm looking at this year. So really when I think about it, um, we're all people. We all have different challenges that we deal with, um, whether it's running, like me running a business like this. I'm very fortunate and, you know, it's interesting. You have to constantly kind of pivot and adapt and see what's working now versus in the past. And it's like with YouTube, it's like, what kind of thumbnails are people liking now? What types of videos are they liking now? How can I, you know, what do the subscribers actually want to see, right? Versus trying to grow to new subscribers because there's current subscribers and then you're getting into the algorithm for everybody else. So it's a balancing act of giving the subscribers what they want and then also creating videos for growth. Right, so it's kind of staying ahead of all of that stuff. And then with blogging, it's like staying ahead of the Google algorithm updates and pivoting and adapting quickly. So with these types of online businesses, pivoting and adapting is pretty uh, important, obviously, and it's something that you can do. Um, but you know, I do like the teaching and I do like connecting. So I think one thing I like and I've always kind of been good at is just explaining more complex concepts in easy to understand ways. So um, I like that part, you know, again, I'm here to make money, right? With a blog, I wanna make money with it. With a YouTube channel, I wanna make money with it. And part of it is like, because it does make money, um, at first, you know, on YouTube, it's like you deal with a lot of negative comments or different types of comments. And it's like, you have to like, this me, I treat it as a persona. It's like the Adam and for a YouTube channel isn't necessarily me. Now this video is me, right? <laughs> if I'm teaching something, it's still me, but I'm just going through different strategies and things. But I think separating from that is important, whether you have an Instagram or blog or YouTube channel and it's a personal brand, like yes, it's you, but you have to almost treat it separate. Like your uh, home life is separate from the business side of things. So there's definitely lines in the sand that I won't cross. Like I'm not gonna film a baby, I'm not gonna film my wife too much, or like just us in the living room. Like I don't wanna interfere with that aspect of my life. I wanna keep it, you know, everyone has a different line. Some people will never show anyone in their family. It just is different. But for me, the thing that I do like is the teaching and the connecting. But again, I'm here to make money, right? You can watch any amount of, I have 300 and something videos on my YouTube channel. If you wanna learn about anything related to what we've done with growing a fast, growing blog or a fast to monetization YouTube channel, you can just watch one of those. If you wanna work with us, that's when you would click the link and do that, but you don't have to, right? Everyone's like, damn course creator. You know, ours is actually coaching. It's not just a static course we're asking money for. We actually have people in there, but it's, uh, yeah. So YouTube videos are free. Everyone expects everything for free and that's just not how it works. I wouldn't be, if everything was free, my channel wouldn't exist, right? So it has to be supported somehow. So I do like the teaching component. I do like connecting. I do like doing live Q and A's with our students. You know, we have over 6,000 students all over the world. Um, so that's pretty much it, you know? I hope this resonated with you. Um, I'll do more of them. I think I'll do a driving down to Texas video, maybe. We'll see if I can figure out the phone holder and the microphone uh, but that could be kind of funny me driving down with a dog and talking about life and going full circle and moving back to texas so um you know we're sitting at i don't know 30 or so minutes last one was like a perfect hour-long video but i think this one i just kind of wanted to dive into that main thought of like 
every single influencer just puts money in your face and it makes you compare, right? So just stop comparing to them because they're probably not that cool anyways. And, you know, just live your life. Realize that you have everything to make you happy right now in this moment. So wherever you are, it's perfectly okay. And I'm going to leave you with a little studio tour. So I'll do a little walking tour around with my phone, show you my different equipment, show you um, the things that I use and give you a little behind the scenes. So uh, please comment, you know, with any questions you might have or thoughts on the video. I really appreciate it. I hope you like this format. If you have any ideas for other things you want me to talk about in this style, that would definitely be helpful. So like comment with, hey, I'd like you to talk about this or that, or and it doesn't have to relate to blogging or YouTube. It can relate to anything. So feel free to do that. Give it a like. I appreciate it. Um, check out the other one if you haven't seen that yet, just the honest reality one. And I'll see you in another video and I'll leave you with the studio tour.